This is The Change Physician, episode 121. Hey folks, welcome back to the, another episode of The Change Physician Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Kevin Kukara, with my Amaze Balls co-host, Dr. Melissa Katie. How are you, Dr. Katie? I'm great, sitting mm-hmm. in a thunderstorm. They're sitting in a thunderstorm. So hopefully lightning will not strike once and certainly hopefully not strike twice <laughs> and knock off our podcast as we're here recording for today's yes. episode. Um, but we will anticipate that that the weather gods are interested in hearing this topic as well and will spare <laughs> us any sort of trauma and danger. Although in Austin, it's like, man, you guys are having a lot of interesting weather phenomenons and interesting, in, interesting disasters, both man-made and non man-made disasters as we speak and you guys of, have had some crazy stuff in oregon we 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 have it um a lot of heat fires again lots of heat it's actually uh, it wasn't as hot as they were expecting because of the particulate matter from mm-hmm. all the forest fires um dropped it from the low hundreds into the mid to mid 90s which is kind of depressing in so many different fashions but yeah it's been interesting yeah yeah all right. Well, well, let's talk. Let's talk about something specifically not specifically not around environmental disasters and man-made disasters. Instead, we'll talk about personal disasters. Yeah. And this has to relate to really: Are you sacrificing your physical health for your financial health when it comes to retirement? Um, this topic. What I liked about this is this. I, I'm always reminded of a. Um, it was a quote unquote study. And I'm putting study in quotes because it's a lot of these studies that gets produced, particularly by um, different types of corporations are really about marketing rather than any, any true research part to it. Um, but this came out of Merrill Lynch. And what they did is they interviewed retirees and pre-retirees about what their top uh, concerns were with when it comes to retirement. And the three big concerns Number one is that they would have, that the person they were interviewing would either have a costly health issue or a loved one would kind of have a costly health issue. So you retire and now you get cancer or maybe you're sick or you just, you know, heart disease, something that now it becomes extraordinarily expensive to take care of. The second big fear that they had was rising cost of goods and services, inflation. Obviously inflation is is a big concern because that erodes your kind of monetary base. It's that silent killer there. And then lastly is not having enough money to do what I'd like to do. So out of those top three, you know, sec- number two and number three really are still related to that money thing, making sure you have the pot. But the number one, and the one I found that really fascinating about this article is all about health. Yes. And the answer to obviously what Merrill Lynch, who is a, is a brokerage company, there was like, well, then you need to increase your spending. And me, the first time I read this, and this was, I think, published in 2016 or 2017, I was like, well, actually what that tells me as it's you need to pay more attention to your health. And the reason for that is if, if a lot of times we, we sacrifice our physical health by working obscene schedules, taking extra amounts of call, doing all this stuff in the, in the path of money, 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 because I need to fund my retirement. And, and we see this a lot also with kind of, in some way, some of the, in the fire movement with people like, well, I'm going to work my, my butt off for five, 10 years or whatever. I'm going to sack all this money away. And then I can retire early. Well, if you retire early and you're physically not capable to do the things that you want, what have you actually gained? Mm -hmm. And I kind of visualize it. If you're taking, you know, you you have all this, these wells and pools when it comes to like your future. And if you're pulling all this money out of your current physical well, and you're putting it into this financial well so that you can have that extra stuff to draw down when you're, when in 10 years in the future, you've actually not really, you're not coming out ahead. You're actually depleted because you've depleted that physical well so much. And the other part about it is if you kind of think about it from an investment return, if you put in the day-to-day habitual work when it comes to your overall physical health, and, and, and that includes your brain and everything else, but which is your physical health now, you are actually, unlike saving for retirement, you receive the dividends on that now. Mm-hmm. A healthy lifestyle today provides you benefits as of this date Yep. and in the future so where else can you get a return on investment like that so i don't know what what are your thoughts about physical well, i kind of know what your thoughts are because i know some of your background but yeah. i'll let you put your perspective on this. right so. well the, here comes a challenge doctor um <laughs> you know i not only do you get the the benefits reaps the benefits from the all the habits that create this lifestyle of better health you're neurologically you're wiring yourself to create these patterns and habits 
to maintain. So it's easier as it gets a little harder, as you get older, to keep doing the very things that it's been giving you benefits, which long-term, this insidious process of a healthy or unhealthy lifestyle, you know, is that down the road, you're going to see what happens, whether you have the strength and the balance and um, even how the brain benefits from physical exercise. And even like the, the ability to do the best you can for your patients or the work that you do, you're much more astute and focused and even just your demeanor there. I mean, there's so many um, social benefits, um, even in your profession, you physically being able to move and do things. Um, I can't tell you how many times I see people around me that are literally in their forties, fifties, that they barely can move around or they they just don't look healthy at all. They're on their second or third marriage. And, you know, I I'm in my second marriage. I mean, there are definitely, we make and make mistakes, but at the same time, you're not able to contribute the time to those other things that give you good health. And, and, you know, I mean, mental health as well, not just, you know, physical, but your overall wellness is definitely, um, as I try to tell a lot of my family members that it's not just genetics, it's a lot of what you do. And sometimes we use genetics as an excuse that this is just the way my parents were. And this is what I'm going to be like when I'm in my fifties and sixties, like, no, you have a potential when within that genetic code. And if you don't utilize, you know, these habits, you will see the worst part of your genetic code. You, you might as well do the things that you know are healthy and get the most potential out of what you're designed of. Um, so that's always, you know, you can go into epigenetics and all these things, but your thoughts, the people you're around, what you do, um, there's so many things that contribute and uh, it's really hard to watch physicians that are killing themselves. And not only that, but we're really bad as a general like profession as physicians on like, as far as financially on how we start spending more because we make more and you really haven't created the space or the investments to free up your time later. So they're still grinding it later in their years when they're not as healthy. So it's just, it's just like a vicious cycle that I, I see and I, it kills me to, you know, not that I'm perfect in everything I do for my health, but you have to be mindful and do a good handful of those things to really do a little bit better than the average. That's my thoughts. So many thoughts. And I have no, you know, no opinion at all. <laughs> no opinion at all. But but it but it makes sense. And and I think though, I mean, there's so many things that we can dive into. The genetics things is absolutely drives me insane. Yes. Genetics has influence absolutely positively. Yes. Yeah. The the. But the, where genetics plays a major role, like the things that are okay, this is a major thing, and it's purely about genetics are going to be present whether or not you do anything about it. and I'm thinking of like you know like trisomy 18 and 13 all those ones that we learned find about out early <laughs> yeah you find out early because you tend to die before the age of 18 because there's these horrible genetic conditions right and then like you perfectly stated is the rest of it is all it does is provide it, it, it talks about vulnerabilities but not predestiny right and and the difference when people I don't know, people love genetics and I can't figure out exactly what the what I'm sure there's some sort of cognitive psychology reason for why people cling on to the genetics. Like, oh my God, this is, this provides a sense of certainty to me to see that the geneticist, that the 23 in me has told me that because I have this gene, that is my path. When really what you should be looking at it is almost like, like a, a, a seer, someone who can see out in the future and say, oh, these are the things I need to worry about. I have risk factors for early cardiac disease. So what should I be doing to help mitigate those risks? Well, I can do things like eating, exercise, stress reduction. And, and so rather than viewing these things or these genetic tests and whatever is this, is this magical thing that is gonna tell you everything that you need about health is just use it as, as really like, like a telescope where you can kind of see, well, these are the potential problems. It's sort of like you're driving down the road and you're looking far ahead of the car to see where there's an accident up so, so you know whether you need to, slow down, take an alternate road, whatever. We can use that genetic information the same way. But the other part you hit on was sort of that mortgaging your life where people are working so hard. And then instead of then taking that money and then either 
saving it so they have that rainy day fund so then they don't have to work as hard and they can start crafting the day-to-day -day life, which is something that we have been since day one on this podcast. We're saying if you're crafting and designing the life that you want now, then you don't need to kill yourself in this anticipatory future that may or may not ever come to pass. And so if you are working so hard that then you end up increasing your spending to take extravagant vacations to escape your day-to-day -day life, maybe you should focus on trying to change your day-to-day -day life so that you can have a better, happier day-to-day -day, rather than those little teeny breaks that then you know, you're waiting the day before, the Sunday before you have to go back to work and going, oh my God, I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, I just had this break, I barely recovered. Or, I, or even worse, I need a vacation for my vacation. Mm -hmm. And then you're going back to this, this lifestyle that you, yes, you have actively crafted because we all have some degree of agency over what we choose to do when we are finished with medical school and residency. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, when you give the example of a break for like a two week vacation or say you even take four weeks, if you're, I mean, the way we're designed, there's a practice that you have to have that's more frequent than that it, it's it's like you know you're not going to just shower once a year like there's a reason <laughs> you're, you intermittently shower like there's you don't want all the the, the dirt build up over nine, 11 months and then you get rid yes. of it all you you oh my god that was like one of those things that just like pops in your brain because now i'm like an, it's such a great analogy right oh you're, you're going to shower once a year are you only going to brush your teeth once a year yeah. Are you only going to go to the bathroom once a year? Because yeah, you're right. It's, it's a day to day health investment that you're doing. Right. And, <laughs> and, and you, if you do like, you know, sometimes, you know, you could be off a day or two, it's okay. You know, those things can slide, but you got to get back on it. You got to, you know, you got to keep moving. You got to do some kind of activity. It doesn't have, you know, all these things that are just part of general health. Like you just, you got, you've got to, incorporate it into a practice. And um, the one thing that we're really bad at, especially the way we're trained as physicians, is just grind it out and, you know, tough it out. And you go through a lot of training, a lot of call, and you, you know, you don't get the break. You, you have to keep chugging along. You don't, you have to keep taking your tests every week or whatever. I mean, it's usually every week you have some kind of test in medical school. There's, there's no break. Like, unfortunately, that's been wiring us a certain way. And so, um, the way we're wired, if we didn't make a you know, habit or this, this practice of wellness before you get integrated into the system of training, then it's really hard. Um, you know, you're going to end up creating this bad, bad patterning or um, lack of attention to your wellness later on in your uh, profession. So um, I think that's why we bring this, this episode up is because are you really aware of the things that you're doing? that are anti-wellness and so having an awareness and acknowledging them and in recognizing are you going to wait till you just bust you know before you finally decide and by that point you've done a lot of you know i don't want to call it damage but there's been a lot of negative processes going on that's not really contributing well to your overall long-term health and are you really going to enjoy retirement if you're just hobbling along and and can't and agree and bad things can happen to any of us but I don't use that as an excuse, you know, to say, I'm just, I'm going to give up because something bad could happen to me. No, you, you still take personal responsibility. You take care of yourself because the people around you you care about are going to be impacted by your poor health or your children, um, whatever the case may be. And so, um, you know, you can take this, be like a little bit of a less selfish thing, you know, try not to be burdened around those around you, um, not just a financial concern. Um, and yeah, you could invest, you could invest, uh, that HSA money, um, not necessarily having to pay for all this health concerns, but invest that in other things, self-directed and have a huge chunk when you're maybe 90 years old and you finally, your body says, ah, I need a little help, you know, versus at 60, you're having these chronic illnesses that are, you know, draining your bank accounts. So. Well, there there's a couple, another, I love, you're just on fire today. There's another word. I love anti-wellness. Oh, like yeah. anti-wellness habits like are you doing things that are actually not only not neutral these are anti-wellness things and but it made me think like okay 
well, if you're, if you're trying to create habits, and we'll talk about habits in our episodes, but I was just thinking of the, like stages. I mean, imagine, listener, if you're in medical school, it's a different environment. Pe- medical school is difficult, absolutely. But what you do have in medical school is you have structure and you have a basically fairly predictable schedule. Even when you're on rotations, a little bit crazier, but you kind of know what you're doing. There's some, you, you don't generally have the same responsibilities in residency. So then integrating healthy habits then proactively rather than being reactive, which most of us want to do, meaning scheduling the times that you're going to want to exercise, planning out what you eat so that you're not just grabbing anything quickly when you're stressed out, which means you're going to generally choose the less healthy option anyway. Um, That's a great place to start those habits. I do think if I had to pick any time that was probably the worst, and maybe this probably has a lot to do just more on my personal situation at the time, but residency, I think, was the most challenging time to focus on health. Right. Um, and I'd, I'd like about everyone be, else's. <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it's a time thing. So I'm, I'm yeah. and I'm in, again, I, residency is difficult. Residency, I don't know what the hour thing that, that goes. I don't, I don't, do people actually listen to those that much? Do programs? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, I, I was married and we had two small kids when we were in residency. So we had no time there anesthesia you're up early you know you have in-house call of course most residents have in-house calls and and so there was it was really really hard like there was just like people when people usually say well I don't have time to do it most of the time I'm like okay whatever you're not it's not important to you but there are every once in a while that time is like it's like realistically okay you just need to like make it through these next four years I mean that's just the way it is I totally understand and then but and then when people get into into early practice the problem is, is they, they, they kind of default to what they were doing in that residency rather than recognizing that they have these choice. Yeah, there's a choice that you have, yeah. and so it's like, okay, well, you can you can build your healthy habits when you're in medical school, ideally, in which case, hopefully, it'll carry you through residency. Because I'm thinking like um, uh, Doc Thor, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Caleb, who who was very, I mean, guy's super fit anyway, and he's got, developed those healthy habits because he is very habit oriented when it comes to health. And he maintained those during residency. And if you haven't heard that episode, you can go back. I can't remember what episode it was. It was in the first hundred. Great episode because he talked about what he did during residency to stay healthy. Um, but certainly when you were an early, early attending level, being much more conscious about, about how to make sure that you are moving every day, that you are, if you're not in an environment where you can eat well, well, bringing food that you can eat well, do it. And <laughs> It's, it's just takes, this is, I think we've said this every episode. It just takes a level of awareness. Yes. To understand that those choices, health, wealth, relations, all this stuff have long-term consequences. And if you preactively help by being aware and you start making these decisions for the next day, we, you know, what we call uh, intentional actions or what there's a in, implementation intentions where you're actually anticipating that you're more likely to make that future, you know, future. So well, tomorrow I'm going to pack this. So I don't have to order the cheeseburger from McDonald's or whatever, being more aware and intentional, you can really craft these healthy habits into your life early, early, early on. And those will definitely provide those evidence bang on. I know I'm going I know I'm going a little bit into the healthy habit of things. And I don't want to do that, but I just, we need some awareness. We need to be focused and intentional. And the earlier that you start that the, and invest in that behavior, the greater dividends it's going to, you'll, that you'll be benefiting from. And those benefits start now versus 30 years down the line with retirement. Yeah. And to specify the episodes with Dr. Caleb Breton, Doc Thor, hashtag Doc Thor, it was uh, episode 34 and 43. Hmm. Um, were some of the, the first ones we had with him, but, um, yes. And, and the fact is you can be aware, um, but sometimes that awareness is blurred by denial. Um, and, uh, I think you have to, uh, when you, it's like, you don't want to wait until you have the medical problem to suddenly be aware. Like if you can just be mindful of, you know, I want to be healthy when I'm later on in my years and um, recognize that if you're retired, like, do you, do you want to 
you know, be retired and be in the hospital or going to doctor's visits, that's all you talk about, you know? So um, health is a critical um, component to put some effort into you. Um, I know that it's um, something that, I don't know what, what really drove me in that direction, but I, I've just played a lot of sports and I started recognizing some of the benefits. And, and luckily when you are stressed, and I know Caleb, I think he mentioned too, it's a stress relief too. Um, you know, when you're, you know, in the, the rigors of training that it's, it's there, you can be excessive in your, your training sometimes, but you know what, I'd rather someone be a little more excessive in a healthy habit, um, than not doing any healthy habit and, and recognize when to kind of moderate it uh, down a little bit, if it's a little too intense, but, um, at least the habit's been created, but, I know that we want to talk and dive into a lot of the little tiny habits um, that we uh, can implement in our busy lives in order to be healthier versions of ourselves so that you can actually enjoy retirement on a financial retirement level and not have to retire your body before you're financially uh, suddenly have money in the bank. <laughs> so um, any last thoughts, uh, Kevin, before I take us out? Yeah. So the, I guess the last thought kind of is this fits that theme is we tend to be so money focused and and focusing, if you're aware of retirement in the first place, people are so focused on the financial aspect. Mm -hmm. But the more I think about it, the number one, really the number one focus everybody should have is on your health. That includes physical and mental health first. Mm -hmm. Then the whole financial health part should come after that. Because if you have that physical health, there, you can work longer if you need to. You can do the things, what you want. If you, and even if you have an absence of funds, maybe you don't have as much, you still can enjoy your life much better. If God forbid something horrible does happen to you and you get a health-related concern, if you're already at a baseline of pretty, phys pretty strong physically and mentally, you're going to recover from it better. You're going to have a better treatment course. So I just cannot think of anything and anything that is more important to invest in than your health first. And that's my last words of wisdom. Amen. Well, I think that was a good way to end it. So I'm just going to say, um, join us in the next episode because we're going to dive in a little deeper on little tiny habits um, to help you out. If you don't have some habits that are healthy, um, we'll give you some ideas and that'll be in the next episode. So for those of you uh, that just came across this episode and don't know about the change physician, you can go to thechangephysician.com, learn more about us and the podcast, and you can join the community, whether you're a physician or a physician ally. And we will look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care. Take care, folks.